it's getting dark. Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to the Minecraft LAN party. So the villagers look like they're gathering in the back again. They really like the space between those two sets of doors. Interesting. Uh, and they've mostly stopped gardening or farming because I think we're at max capacity. So I need to get some of these guys out of here. But um, welcome. You got turtle feet, little feetsies sticking out and a bunch of turtles in there. And I hope that is not uh, bothersome to anyone. I've got 14 scoots so far. I would feed these guys a little bit uh, to make them go into breeding mode, but I think there's a set of eggs down there already. So we are waiting for ba more babies. And I decided to build myself a little bit of a pumpkin farm over here. And it's it's going, it's doing its thing. It's not huge. It's, uh, it's 24 plants. I'll be, we'll be talking about that in a moment. Okay, so I have my farm situation over here. I've got one patch of, of pumpkins and two patches of melons. And I probably should consider swapping out one of the patches of melons for pumpkins. Because if I go over here and look in my chest here where I have such stuff, I have lots of melons and I have shulker, one shulker box filled with melons. I have to discard a couple shulker boxes here with these carved pumpkins because the villagers don't want them. Um, and I have like 50 pumpkins here. So the I get twice as many melons out of this arrangement as I do pumpkins. And at one point that was fine. And if we go over to the cove um, and take a look, the production isn't super high over there. Let's go ahead and do that. Welcome to the cove. So we have <laughs> that rains here, but not over there. Um, yeah, I have to build a boat shop. Something I said I was going to do months and months ago. I've been playing around with. Hi, buddy. I've been playing around with stacking boats, and you could do it. And I was thinking of building the shop out of stacked boats. They're not super stable, is the problem. Oh, bonk! You can actually accidentally bonk them and. So I, mean, I have to play around with like putting uh, fence posts or iron bars around them or something like that. Hi. Uh, okay. We have big hole, big old melon and pumpkin farms down here. And oh, the pumpkins are doing okay. Okay. That, oh, wait. But they're all carved. See? So 24... Um, the mound slices, I can, I can craft some of these, right? It's the problem with a automated farm like this. And we have, yeah, so a stack and a half of, of melons. So there are times when uh, people are on and I, I suspect it's a uh, Larax when he's in his tower there the iron farm is loaded and it's doing its thing and we might be close enough to no I don't think we are the amusement park I think the amusement park is too far away I don't think the iron farm is loaded when somebody's at the amusement park so I've been coming over here and checking this out periodically and finding lots of iron in here. Uh, I cleaned it out a little bit earlier. So we've got like, oh, we're, we're getting close to filling up. I mean, this box is, is going pretty good. So there's plenty of iron there. Um, but whatever's keeping this thing loaded is not always keeping the cove loaded and with plants in order for them to get their growth cycle 
they have to uh, you have to be within 120 blocks of a player. So I'm thinking I I should build instead of me having to go remember. Oh, it's time to go harvest stuff. I want pumpkins and melons to trade with the farmer villagers in order to get uh, emeralds. So am I going to make this? No, I'm not. I'm going to land on the steps, aren't I? Oh, we're going to be so close. So close. Last minute. Whoa. Plop. Not bad. Okay. So. That's the reason I am building melon and pumpkin farms. Down by the artificial village. Just so I have a constant supply of them to trade with the villagers. Yeah. <clears throat> Look at all those potatoes. I need to like clear out. And I don't think none of these guys are clerics or white coats. Oh, there's nobody over here. Yeah, okay. So anyway, I need to I need to just call a bunch of villagers out of here so they start breeding again. Then we get some other options. Did I tell you that I had I don't think I did. Let's go find him. Or so I, I have this Impaling 5 guy with Lure 3 for 12. So this is basically a lateral move on the Lure, but Impaling 5. Not bad. And then let's find the other one. So I haven't replaced the completely locked up Cleric. Um, although I did find another Cleric. So I have a Riptide 1 trade right here. Not, uh, not, yeah, obviously I want a higher Riptide trade. Channeling for 11. Hi, you are my new friend. As soon as I get another, another trident, I'm going to make me a channeling trident. Channeling, channeling is a, there's only one level. So 11 emeralds for this, not bad. Uh, and I will make a, a channeling trident and we will find ourselves some creepers or I'll make a creeper farm and we will have ourselves a ball. Charge creepers galore. Nice. Okay, so. Okay, so this is real basic uh, pumpkin slash melon farm right here. This observer looks for the growth of the of the plant triggers this piston sticky piston it gets like a one tick pulse which pulls this uh, observer over and then back and it sends out an update and triggers this regular piston which breaks the the fruit and makes it fall in here look at that there were yeah so we've already gotten a few while I've been on uh, recording so I've got a couple rows of this I made it 12 long I wanted to run these this way uh, but there's something I'm doing that's directional in nature and it uh, oh got one right there that's directional in nature I got a couple three um, oh got another uh, so it's completely random what happens. I'm doing something here, which I will show you in a moment. And there's a cave over here that's in a slime chunk. I need to figure that out. So, I have supplies here. Not enough, but they'll get me going. I need to dig out some space because I'm out of space here. But let me, let me actually kind of start, kind of construct part of one of these. And I need, so these are both sets of pumpkins and so it's 24 pumpkin plants because those are 12 12 uh, plants long and this year I have three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so I have 13 here 26 there so right now all of that is basically as if all of these were pumpkins and completely automated so as soon as it grows it breaks it and collects it it harvests yeah, let's just go with harvest. So, okay, I have to do a little digging. Let me do that. I'll be right back. 
So I've been through all these caves to light them up. But uh, didn't realize how close some of them were to my little village area here. And I only really need the floor up there. I don't think I need... I don't think I need to build down very much. So I think I got enough stone here. Oops. Place the floor. Okay. So, how are you doing? I'm actually doing pretty well. I'm feeling much better. The, uh, <clears throat> the steroids uh, seem to have two, three, four, five, and then plop. Um, I, I seem to have the, the effects of the, the steroid treatment seem to have uh, faded away, which is excellent because they're getting really annoying. Um, don't feel lightheaded, restless, grumpy, um, any of that stuff. My eyes have, uh, my eyes were not exactly cooperating. It's kind of hard to explain, but they were kind of, uh, they would get tired super easily. Do I, have, I might have gravel up there, huh? And so I was having trouble sort of focusing on the fine details because my eyes it seemed to affect each eye differently. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, so that's uh, so that's good. So I'm feeling much better. And uh, the, the aches and pains that I did have from the accident and the ones that the steroids were masking uh, have subsided. So I'm not feeling any injury. My, uh, my neck was a little sore for a little bit. So I think I had a little bit of whiplash. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe I had a little bit of a concussion. Which wouldn't be unexpected um, given how hard I was hit. Uh, the police apparently have ruled that the pickup truck was at fault in the accident. Um, so, but I've got other insurance companies calling me now trying to get statements from me. I, I don't know. Because um, I think maybe they're trying to get out of paying that driver. Who, who was the only one that got, as far as I could tell, got injured and, and ended up going to the hospital. Really sucks for, for him. But... Um, but he shouldn't have wrecked six cars on the freeway. Shouldn't have been in such a rush. <sighs> uh, anyway, so I'm I'm actually doing much better. I'm feeling I'm feeling much much better now than I had been. Um, so that that's all good. And let's see what else. I've got. Um, oh, the only other real news is. Uh, Chihuahua Power G is in New Orleans for a work conference. So I've been kind of left to my own devices. I haven't been playing a ton. I, as you see, I built the farms here, but I haven't really been playing a whole lot. Um, I've been trying to get rest, which is kind of important. And I'm tired now, so we'll, uh, we'll see. I may not stay up super late tonight. It's not too late right now. Um, I keep hearing pistons, so this thing is is chugging away. Nice. Hi, Lapis. I will... Okay. So, let's see here. I've got... I need stone bricks for the wall here. Um, this is... This wall is kind of arbitrary. I could actually, once I get past the village, which I think happens pretty... Let's see. From the door. The door's there. One, two, four, five. I think... 
the village ends here, right? I could actually dig in here and I'd be behind the village. So I could actually, from here, this whole area is going to be walled off. I'm just going to go build the wall. Because you don't need to see this stuff. Uh, so from here, I could actually dig over and do another set of these guys over that way. I could extend it if I wanted to. Okay, so let's grab... Let me put away some stuff and I will grab things I need to construct another, start constructing another sort of section. Okay, so here's what the first layer of the farm looks like. We've got all these hoppers to carry stuff away and we are going to put dirt down along here and this will get tilled. This will become farmland. And the hoppers underneath can pick up stuff through farmland, so that's not a problem. Where things become a problem is the next is the next layer. So we want to be able to have the hoppers pick up stuff through the regular dirt that sits next to it. So I figured out a little process for doing it. And the reason the farm is oriented in this way is because it is um, it's. Uh, do, do, do. I need a few things here. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this this process seems to be somewhat directional. So if I put down a rail there and a rail there and then break this rail, I can then take a minecart with a hopper and put it on that rail and then break the rail Bloop, and it just falls down and then if I put a block of dirt above it and then I place a piston a regular piston above that facing down and power that piston for a bit I'm gonna leave that there it puts that hopper minecart inside the block and then if I if I go and drop some items on that block, they get picked up. How did I just throw a whole block, a whole stack of dirt? I know it's possible. I see people doing it, but I've never been able to figure out how to do it. I must have, uh, there must be a key shortcut or something. Okay. Oh, They're coming in now. Right? So if I if I just hit my throw key, what is going on? Did I oh I wonder if it, Cause normally it just throws one item. Oh, if I hold down the uh, command key. I guess that would be the Windows key or whatever on other platforms. Interesting. And that key sometimes gets stuck in Java. Okay, so I'm on, let me put together a few of these. So with building in the other direction, the other orientation, uh, I am able... Oops. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, cooperate. Be nice. Uh, you can get one minecart embedded like that, but if you put another one next to it, it'll it'll cause both of them to get sort of misoriented. So that's not great. Not what we want, at least. But in building this direction, so if they are building, if we're building north south, north south as opposed to east-west seems to work okay so if I do the same thing if I make another minecart hopper bloop and put that down break it break the rail and then power the piston see they're embedded in there and it'll be just fine I'm gonna put water in here so that I can hydrate the farmland um, I had been sort of playing around with this and putting the water on the other side and sort of reversing everything and while that works 
Um, oops, break the rail. If you don't break the rail, the piston won't be able to push. Uh, oh, the water on this side helps hydrate the farmland over there. We're going to till these. Uh, and it can work up to four blocks away, and it doesn't matter what's in between, which is kind of cool. Uh, so that's a neat little trick. It doesn't have to be right next to the actual farmland. So, okay, let me get the rest of these built out, and then we'll move on to the next step. So that we have 12 hopper bike carts embedded in 12 bits of dirt. And... I think we can remove these hop these pistons now. And move on to the next step. Let me go pick up all that stuff that just got dropped. Uh okay, so speaking of of MS and my difficulties. Selma Blair posted a thing on her Instagram um, acknowledging that she has been diagnosed somewhat recently with MS and that she's having some trouble with it, which is really sad. Uh, but she seems to have good support, so good support network, and she's talking um, very positively about her experience and the people working around her, which is excellent. I notice that this happens occasionally. Um, the stems, the stem ends up pointing in towards the space as if there's a melon there, but there isn't. And I'm wondering if I'm uh, a pumpkin, I'm wondering if a pumpkin will even grow there. I've noticed that in a few cases. Now, if I place a pumpkin, if I grab one of these and place a pumpkin in the spot, it will get broken and that stem will sort of sort itself out. I should come back and make a note of this particular one, second from the end on the second row, and see if it sort of repairs itself. Okay. Um, next step, I need observers and dirt. Put this up here. So, um, Salma Blair's post on, on her Instagram was very uh, heartfelt and touching. If you haven't seen it, um, uh, it's it's worth checking out. Um, so there are MS is a relatively rare disease, but not completely unheard of. So there are people who who uh, who have it, and people who are well known, which is sad. Okay. So we have this observer pointing down. Um, we have to get the water in here. To do that, I'm gonna use these bricks and we are going to, hey, stop it. I don't know why, it's been doing that ever since 1.13 came out. It's a little frustrating. Okay, so I have this little trough here where the water will go. And I have some, I believe I have some ice in the shulker box. Yes, so we will place down ice and make it go. Ice, 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 and break. Uh, okay, and then uh, other, another MS news, but, um, oh, dietary news. Uh, I, one of the things I got kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of obsession with the notion of of making uh, making fresh pasta, fresh gluten free pasta. Um, there is a restaurant in Vancouver which makes fantastic pasta and fresh gluten free pasta, and it's one of my favorite restaurants in the world. And it's called Ask for Luigi. 
sorry, I'm looking at order of operations here, and I think this is the next the next one. I have observers here, and I think they go over here. So we want these observers to be pointing down like that. Is that correct? I think so. <clears throat> and there are there are commercially available gluten-free fresh pastas available. Um, I have a there are some very good dried gluten-free pastas, but fresh is uh, fresh is especially can be especially good, but they also tend to be very expensive. Um, and it's one of those things that just seemed to me like I ought to be able to do this. I ought to be able to make these. Okay, so pistons. Okay, so we've got the water there. So I should then be able to take my hoe and till these. And they will get hydrated. Look like they already are. And then I put pistons in there. And that will break the plants. Yeah, see, they're, they're already getting hydrated. That's beautiful. And actually, the water that's in here might actually be able to hydrate these. It's one, two, three. It's three. It's only three blocks away. I think that would work, even though there's air in there. I don't think it matters. And if it did matter, I could just put in a row of blocks, and, and they would work. But it doesn't matter. I want this to be consistent, and the glowstone there helps with the lighting situation. So next up, the last thing I need is I need sticky pistons on top of there so anyway so i the way whenever i start working on um coming up with recipes that are adapted for my particular set of food allergies and my particular uh, set of um uh, dietary requirements is I start, I just go and I do a lot of individual research. I just look at all the different recipes out there and why are, you know, what are people doing? How are they doing it? And, um, and then I kind of synthesize from that. Here's the common elements. So when I make my, you know, when I decided, oh, I want to make curry. Oops. Thank you, turn. I need eight more, so I'm going to take two of these pumpkins. Um, <clears throat> I went through, and of course, there are a ridiculous number of curry recipes out there. So, all I did was go through and looked at, here's what most of them have, these kinds of, these kinds of ingredients, and I figured out how to make those, and then I... Let's see here. Um, <clears throat> learned how to make those. And then I, I just kind of made it a few times. Curry itself isn't necessarily something that I have to worry about, but a lot of curries do use, uh, curries from places like Thailand will use fish sauce, which will make me like have to go to the hospital. <laughs> so, um, that's that's no good. Uh, so anyway, um, going through looking at fresh pasta, and fresh pasta is something that before I was diagnosed with my weed allergy, fresh pasta was something I had attempted to make before and, and had kind of a frustrating time with it. And let's see, wait until one of these actually goes. Um, <clears throat> and then the notion of doing gluten-free fresh pasta is particularly challenging because gluten is kind of a magical thing. There's a reason that wheat is such a popular ingredient in the world because the the gluten contained within wheat it does, just does amazing things. You mix it together and you hydrate it and like sort of work it and it kind of all hangs together and gives stuff body and keeps the dough from falling apart. It's just it's wonderful stuff. And I don't know that I'm, I'm not celiac. 
in that I'm not gluten intolerant. I'm just allergic to wheat, rye, and barley. Uh, so I'm allergic to some some proteins within those those grains. Uh, and gluten is a collection of proteins. So it's possible that I am actually allergic to some or all of the proteins that make up what we call gluten. But I don't know. Um, so, but I stick to flours of other grains like rice and tapioca and potato and, and corn and all that. So I got some flour mix, uh, some gluten-free flour mix from Ar uh, King Arthur flour. They have a, they have a line uh, of gluten-free sort of products and they're pretty good about testing from the scene, from what it, the way it looks. And I found, and I, I went through and, and looked at the recipes for mixing fresh pasta, which is one of those things that on the surface seems really simple, but then when you go and try and do it, you run into problems that no one ever really addresses in those recipes. It's really frustrating. So the other night I mixed up a batch of dough, no luck whatsoever. And, uh, just everything fell apart and, uh, um, and so and then I, I found a recipe for fresh pasta that King Arthur flour itself published on their website and so I went and tried that had a little better luck with it and discovered a couple things that were a little um, were a little surprising to me but uh, it turns out the dough behaves much better if it's cool if it's refrigerated so typically people mix up the dough so they take flour and they take eggs sometimes in it some additional oil uh, sometimes salt sometimes water mix it all together and then when they get done they end up with the dough that they need okay you win come on one of you grow please uh, and you end up with dough that you need and then you put it through the machine you roll it out to whatever thickness you ultimately want it's all fine and dandy um, but i found that the the dough because it doesn't have any gluten in it doesn't hang together very well it gets very brittle and breaks and and, and cracks and all that and then but i found if you refrigerate the dough and typically after it's mixed people will let it rest oh whoa we work okay uh, they will let it rest. And I've come to the conclusion, yay, uh, that people don't know why they make pasta the way they do. They, oops, they make it the way they do because that's the way they were taught, whether by their parents or by a teacher or what, or they saw it on the internet or whatever. They just, they just make it and then they get these ideas, oh, it needs to rest. I think it does need to rest um, and I think the resting does a couple different things and it depends whether or not there's any gluten in the in the dough um, and but for the most part I think the the dough needs to rest in order to, to let the liquid in the dough completely hydrate the flour that's there um, which is important whether there's gluten in it or not. <clears throat> but when you when you need the dough when you work it, you, act, you sort of activate and sort of get those gluten proteins all sort of worked up, and they all kind of hang together. And if you do it too much, they get they'll get kind of tough. They kind of they like clinging to one another, and resting. I think. Well, let the, the, the gluten proteins relax a little bit so they're not completely, um, you know, so they, the dough sort of, you get the benefit of the gluten, but then it, it doesn't go too crazy, I think. Uh, but no one seems to really understand. I think, I think it's, there's so much, especially when it comes to the old school Italian hand mixing 
putting the the flour down on the on the countertop or the cutting board and making it like a little little volcano with a little hole dull bowl in the middle and dumping the eggs in there and then beating the eggs in and c incorporating the flour there's so much like ritual and 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 that's not a bad thing um ritual and food is 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 good and important um but i think a lot of the stuff that gets that people do when it comes to making like traditional pasta is entirely ritual based and to the point where no one really knows and it may be that no one actually really knows exactly why we make pasta the way we do which i just find fascinating anyway <clears throat> i came up with um i came up with a a dough that worked um and i was able to with a fair amount of care because again without the gluten the uh the noodles can be very fragile there's not nothing really to hold them together and people use oh, in there um people use emulsifiers to help bind things together uh but the And one very common one is called xanthan gum. And there's a lot of interesting uh, debate about whether or not that is a good thing to be eating. It's a, it's a fermented bacteria, often based on corn. And or often sort of back, the bacteria is cultivated on the corn. Uh, but it can also be cultivated on wheat and other other things uh foods mostly starches to give the bacteria sustenance um but when when you uh when you put when you mix xanthan gum with uh water and sort of work it a little bit it, it gets it gets a little slimy which is a little weird but it then it does a pretty good job of emulsifying and if you're using eggs like I was so the egg whites have some great emulsifying properties to them as well um, and honestly I think probably plenty on their own in most cases but typically with with uh, wheat flour so you've got um, this go one two three four five so I'm gonna put that there I want to make sure I keep this lid up and then one two three put that there is that right I don't know we will find out um, <clears throat> anyway so the flour mix I was using was a pre-made gluten-free mix the King Arthur mix that they intend to be sort of complete flour substitute and that any any recipe that calls for wheat flour you can just use this stuff in the same measure and it'll work uh, and I'm not convinced that that's going to be always the case and it might it might work particularly well for certain types of things like this stuff probably makes really good pancakes uh, but doesn't necessarily make leaven breads you know stuff that requires yeast so uh or t traditionally requires yeast but anyway um but the recipe that i found which was a king arthur flour recipe for fresh gluten-free pasta um they have two different gluten-free flour mixes they have the stuff i was using their so-called measure for measure gluten-free flour and then they have their all-purpose gluten-free flour <laughs> and the recipe was designed for and, and calls for uh, the all-purpose gluten-free flour 
um, which has a slightly different mix of flowers in it, rice and uh, potato and, and it has sorghum and a um, couple different types of rice flowers. So the pasta that I ended up with has kind of a, it very much tastes like brown rice pasta, which isn't always the most appetizing thing in the world. So I think I need to come up with a slightly better flour mixture and I think the results will be potentially better. Um, but the upshot is I got fresh pasta that I made and was able to cook and was able to just sprinkle some, some Parmesan cheese on and have that way. And then I had some tomato sauce that I had made sort of already made left sorry, leftover tomato sauce and I had fresh pasta and that was pretty darn spectacular very happy with myself over that um, so it will it will get better I will get better at making it I'm sure um, and I have a feeling I'm going to be doing this with some frequency because honestly it's it wasn't in the in the long run it wasn't all that difficult or time consuming and I had leftovers still like 14 scoots uh, I had leftovers yeah these guys have completely stopped farming let's go uh, let's go do some of that let's go take care of some of that let me put stuff away and and the fresh pasta, if you dry it out, it uh, it dries and keeps pretty well from what I understand, which is great. If it, oh wait, gravel and a site goes down here, sorry. Um, it should freeze nicely. And um, yeah, uh, I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's really a downside and when a you know like a an eight or twelve ounce package, so it's basically like two two or three servings of of pasta costs you know eight or ten dollars. Uh, it's it's a little pricey, especially when it's probably less than a dollar's worth of materials. How about you go for a ride, huh? Let's get rid of you first. Woo! Yay. Um, so, yeah. I'm very happy with myself over that. And, uh, and I'm sure I will be... Hi, Mr. Fletcher. And I'm sure I will be working on that more in the future there we go <clears throat> I've been working on uh, coming up with a recording setup oops for the kitchen uh, so if I manage to make a video that's uh, at least somewhat informative and not just you know super crazy wide field of view GoPro footage <laughs> Um, I will probably edit that to get... Oh, hi. Hi. You seem like a potentially good farmer there. Hi. You're a fisherman. I have no use for you. Oh. See, they're already... There's... Oh, hey, hey, dude. Hey, little baby. Hi. You, you just chill. Let me get you over... Over here, where you're a little more useful. <clears throat> oh, baby cleric. Okay. I hope you're a librarian with a useful trade. But we will find out. Did you just throw potatoes at me? So, okay. So anyway, I think that's uh, 
that's it. Oh. Hi. Okay. Ah. Oh. Hi, baby cleric. Can you hold still for just a moment? Bop. Yes, you can. Excellent. Oh, hi, Mr. Butcher. There we go. A couple potential keepers that we will have to investigate further. I don't need more minecarts. Hello, Mr. Nitwit. You're literally useless. Thank you. Okay. We don't want to call too many villagers, because the more villagers, the more they can breed. But these two are out of commission, and I've called a few others. So we will let them go a little bit, and then see what we get. And in the meantime, I have Pumpkin Farm. Doing its thing. And I think what I want to do is. Oh, hey. Well, that's something to think about. I've wandered into a slime chunk. Okay. I'm guessing this is the slime chunk. Okay, that means I need to... I've been relying on lighting back here to keep stuff from spawning. The slimes need... I have to do some research. I think the slimes need like a 3 by. Th or, it depends on the size of the slime. So I think it's entirely possible... I don't want to hang here too much. That on top of these... These get moved, so I can't put, like, half slabs on top. Oh, I could, though. Okay, I'm going to have to half slabs up. I don't think I can put a half slab on top of the pistons, because the half slab... Or can I? I let, me, let me try that. I have some slabs here. And... Let's, uh... And let me get a let me get a pumpkin or eight. So with these slabs here, oops, um, I don't think I can slab over this. So what happens if I put a pumpkin here? Those stay. Very nice. Um, I can put a slab here, right? Can I put a slab here and have it still work? I don't know. Yes! Oh, wow! So the update goes through the slab. Oh, well, th this is a no-brainer then. And then I can slab over top of this. Oops, not there. And I can do this to get up. Okay. Nothing can spawn on the farmland. It's possible that slimes could spawn on the dirt blocks here, which means occasionally they might be able to trample the the stalks. Um, so we'll just have to kind of put up with that, I guess. So we can do that. Um, we can slab on top of all these. So I will have to work on doing that in order to prevent slimes from spawning and screwing everything up. And 
these. I don't have the blocks at the moment, but I can just fill this in so there's no spawnable spots. Okay. That all seems pretty straightforward. Ah. Okay, I have work to do. <clears throat> the little tiny baby slimes might be able to spawn in a one by one, one by one uh, space. We don't want that. So we will fill them in. Okay, but you don't need to see this. And I need to go get some more blocks. I have some blocks here. Okay, cool. Okay, this is all pretty good. So we will take care of this and prevent the slimes from screwing up my machine here. And there you go. I think that's it. I've rambled on enough. This is probably a longer video than I wanted. Um, but there we go. Thank you for watching. This is Theron from Minecraft Land Party. And I will see you next time. All right? Bye.